السلام عليكم كي دايرين لاباس كلشي مزيان كي دايرين مع الصحه كنتمنى تكونوا بخير ولا خير مرحبا في فيديو جديد ديالنا so today's video is going to be a little bit different uh, we will be answering some of your questions that you are sending us through uh, messages on facebook or youtube if you are interested uh, to know a little bit more about us and about our channel keep watching my name is olivier durand my father was swiss my mother is french I was born in Copenhagen, Denmark, and uh, when I was four years old, my family moved to Rome, where I grew up, and I studied in the French School of Rome. Then I studied at the university and became a teacher of Arabic. My name is Agnieszka, and I'm from Poland. I moved to Italy when I was 20, right after I got my high school diploma. Um, actually, I moved to Italy just for holiday and then I decided to stay uh, and carry on with my studies here. I have three nationalities, Swiss, French and Italian, and I live in Rome. I'm Polish, but I also got the Italian citizenship and at the moment I live in Rome. Uh, my mother tongue is uh, French. And uh, as, as a child, I learned uh, a, a Corsican, then Italian, at school English, German, Spanish, and then at the university, uh, Arabic and Hebrew. My mother tongue is Polish, of course. And then as an adult, I learned Italian, English and Spanish. And uh, min bad, uh, min bad. <laughs> At university, I learned uh, standard Arabic as well as uh, Syrian Arabic and Moroccan Arabic. I'm 60 years old. I'm 38 years old. Ten or more years ago, I used to teach uh, in Naples, where uh, Agnieszka studied. So she became a student of mine. And when she finished, we became friends. I used to teach Arabic dialectology. We began with um, Shami Arabic, it means Palestinian Arabic, and then we moved to North African dialects and more especially Moroccan. Back in 2005, when I was doing my bachelor's degree in Naples, I met Olivier. Uh, he was my um, uh, Arabic uh, dialectology professor. It might sound weird for some of you, but uh, yes, we do study Arabic dialects at university and we are very happy about it. So from that point on, I understood that I have to learn some other forms of Arabic in order to uh, easily communicate uh, in any Arab country I will go to in the future. Then I moved to Rome and we met again with the professor. Uh, I convinced him to be part of this project, Painless Arabic. He said yes. Of course, at the beginning, he didn't know he's going to be wearing wigs and crazy clothes. <laughs> I am Jewish. Uh, Agnieszka is uh, Christian and Abdullah is Muslim. We are very good friends. Well, I used to stay three years in Morocco for, uh, for work and study, and so I learned uh, the Moroccan Darija. So my first approach to Moroccan Arabic was, of course, at university. And then uh, I decided to, to travel, to travel to Morocco. I went to Rabat and I studied Moroccan Arabic in a language school. Uh, so I combined uh, the, the studies uh, at school uh, with, um, you know, like uh, conversation with people on the street. That's, in my opinion, that's the, the best combination if you want to learn any language. Then, of course, uh, more I traveled, more I learned. And uh, very important, I always refused to speak French. So they, they had to speak to me in Arabic. So when I got to understand about 70% of the language, I started watching uh, Moroccan YouTubers. There are many of them out there, just uh, check it out for yourself. Uh, they do any kind of content, whatever you like. 
and uh, that helped a lot with my with my language and uh, got me to the point I am now and I'm very happy with the result. For a language there is no difference between a language and a dialect. It's exactly the same thing. It's only the name which differs. It's considered a dialect but if you think of a dialect from our Western point of view, uh, that's definitely not the case because we use dialects in, um, in uh, informal situations, so with our friends and family, uh, while in Morocco uh, they use Darija in both, at the formal and informal situations. So, so you, can use, uh, you can use it with uh, Mulhanut, <laughs> with the shop owner, and also in the uh, in place like post office or uh, the court. It's uh, actually a very difficult uh, topic because Moroccans themselves they don't consider uh, uh, Darija as a as a good or correct language, uh, even if it's their mother tongue. Um, so they would all tell you that you have to study uh, modern standard Arabic, and of course you. You should, but if you want to communicate in Morocco, you have to learn Darija. Well, we choose the English uh, as being uh, more and more an international language, so in order to be understood by, by many people. Of course, it will be easier for us to speak Italian, uh, because it's our now everyday language. But um, we decided to, to reach more people, and that's why we are using English. Yes, I could say that Morocco is fairly uh, safe. Well, of, uh, be careful in Morocco as you would be in, uh, as you would do in your country. So remember that we are in a Muslim country, so try to deepen, try to inform yourself to read much uh, about the Moroccan and Muslim culture. So you cannot go around with a mini skirt, for example, and, uh, but no, really no problems. Morocco is quite safe, but of course you have to remember that there is a different culture that you have to respect. And um, it also depends, depends on the area you live in. There are areas that you, you shouldn't go, of course, as a, as a foreigner. Um, and others that are perfectly fine. And of course, if you think you are going there and uh, you are going to do whatever you do in your country, even if it's not appropriate, uh, then I think you should better, better stay home. It's not true that Moroccan Arabic or any kind of dialect has no grammar, no rules, because any language or dialect needs rules in order to be understood. So the, the Moroccan rules are different from standard Arabic rules. That's true. Of course there is grammar. If there was no grammar, we wouldn't be here to explain it. Well, uh, I don't know exactly. I know that Moroccan prefer to use the Latin characters. So if, if they like like this, um, for me it's the same. It's all about the old habit where there was no um, Arabic characters in phones and computers, so they, they had to use Latin uh, in order to write Arabic. In Morocco I could be understood using only French, but I wanted to, to go further in the, in the culture and, uh, and deepen, so I, try, I learned Moroccan Arabic, it's not that difficult, you know. So behind the language there is a culture so if you were using only French, uh, you wouldn't be able to understand the, the beauty of, the, of these people. And by the way, French is spoken uh, mostly by people with some kind of level of education. So you wouldn't be able to communicate in French with uh, illiterate people. Mm, and uh, we know that in Morocco uh, it's, a, it's a big percentage. Well, as you saw, we choose to, uh, to write in, in Arabic characters and in a transcription. Uh, transcription is a system invented by linguists. There is not one translation, one uh, transcription, 
but many ones, so I use the one I prefer. So when we explain on the board, we of course we use transcription for those who, who can't read Arabic alphabet. Uh, you know, there, there is no simple language. Arabic is far, it's far from our languages, so we have to get out of our linguistic systems and get used to a new, a completely new one. So that's the difficulty in the beginning. I wouldn't say that Arabic is difficult. Uh, you just need to put the work. So if you do the work every day, at least 15-20 minutes a day, uh, you will be successful. There's no answer to that question. In, uh, it depends on many factors. The, how, how, how much do you study? How, um, if you stay in Morocco, if you're not in Morocco, of course, uh, all that contributes. But uh, I think uh, even in some months, you can become to be fluent. My experience has been that I, I had to steal Moroccan Arabic to Moroccans because they always wanted to speak French with me. So I hired a Moroccan cleaning lady which didn't know French, French at all. So she was obliged to talk with me, to, to me in Arabic. So I learned. It all depends on you and the work you put in. It could be six months, could be one year, could be ten years, whatever. Well, clown. And I also teach grammar on the on the board. I write the crazy Abdullah stories. Then, uh, then Abdullah helps me to translate them. And then, of course, editing and posting on YouTube. Uh, the most important thing is that we really enjoy making these videos for you guys. And uh, especially when we have a positive feedback from you that you are learning, that you are enjoying uh, laughing with us and uh, that's <laughs> at the end of the day that's what's what's the most important thing for us we only would love to have more time to make more of them um, and i hope in the future uh, we will do a little bit more thank you so much and uh, see you soon